Okay, awesome. It's really an honor to do something like this. This just really takes me out of my comfort zone. So I haven't really felt this nervous in, in about a year or so um, since I went full-time ministry about three years ago. As a matter of fact, three years ago today, I, was, uh, I went into full-time ministry. Um, one thing I really picked out right away, and, and nothing against you, you young ladies in here, um, is I'm so encouraged that there's men that are that are willing to be here and it, and, and it's a dominant presence um, you have no idea I mean I'm sure you do but to me I just feel like men are falling off in in the, in the sense of, of being one Christians and then two following the Lord the way they should um, so I, I just want to give you guys a round of applause real quick and, and just... um, so like like Jeff was saying, I, I, would, I had a weird life, you know, I remember being a, as far back as I can remember today, it would be probably about seven years old, I was uh, diagnosed with epilepsy, and, uh, and, and I didn't know what that meant, but all I know is I was, I'm a New York Giants fan, I'm from New York, and I can't, I don't, don't judge me, um, <laughs> um, but, but le legitimately, I, I was told that I would never be able to do anything physical, never be able to do anything that would, um, uh, even if the lightest love tap, it could send me into a, a seizure. And uh, and I just remember thinking in my head, like, I, I can't accept that. I, don't, I mean, I'm seven years old. I, I'm, I'm going to conquer the world one day. And, uh, uh, you know, that obviously is still in progress. But um, what I had learned through that whole process is that it's not really about Michael Mack. And, and it's not about who I am. Um, I, for the longest time, I, I, I believed that lie, where I wasn't going to be able to do things. And then I made my Papa Warner football team. Um, and and I, I was told that I was, a, I was cleared to be in, in full-on um, contact sports. And, and, and then I, that led me into my teenage years. But let me back up a little bit. I come from a broken home. Um, I watched both of my parents go through a divorce. My sister and I were, uh, I was about eight years old when the divorce was final, um, and my sister was four. Uh, so you can only imagine the psychology behind what went through my sister's mind and then what went through my mind. Um, both of my parents were obviously unsaved, um, and, and we grew up that way. It wasn't until... Um, I look back, and, and, and some would say, like, you got to be pretty bitter about that. Who wouldn't be, right? Well, that's why God is good. It's because I don't look at it as being uh, in shame or ashamed. Uh, I look at it as, man, this was a point in my life that I really had to grow young. Uh, I had to mature young. And I, and I watched my sister go through it, who didn't really get that point. When my parents split up, it was odd because my dad was from New York and my mom was from Florida. However, my mom moved to New York and my dad stayed in Florida. Um, give me one second. And the funny thing is, is we got up, we got up to New York and of course as kids went with my mother and, um, and uh, we got tied in with some of her good friends and then um, I was able to see my my dad's sister and his whole side of the family. He comes from a family, a huge family. He has seven brothers and sisters. Um, so his sister would take us on the weekends, and um, and and we, in order to go over their house, we had to go to church. And what that meant was, um, listen, you're going to do what you're told, and when you're told, and how you're how you're told, and then you're going to go to church on top of all that. And I never really understood that. I never understood it until I was probably about 14 uh, when I truly, I, I got saved, but I didn't know what it was like to be saved. I watched these people in my life who knew what it was like to be saved, and, and what, what they did was they just presented love in a way that I didn't know it. Because, because right, because you're, you're going through a, bro, a, a situation where it's not your fault, and you watch your parents divorce and go separate ways. You know, and, and what that did was, at the time, the, the devil's a liar, one. Uh, was it put thoughts and in, in things in our heart and our minds, in my sister and my, my mind, where we just thought we were forgotten. 
um, they were leading, my, our parents were leading one life and we were leading another. And, but what it really did for me was it, it, it developed some leadership in me. And I, I look at this stuff today where I'm just like, man, I didn't really think of it that way when I had to. But I had to lead my sister in order to see that her stability mentally and emotionally was fine. <laughs> So you can only imagine what our relationship is like today, uh, even though she lives in New York. As I move on, though, as I transition, um, I would be in trouble. Actually, let me, let me, step, let me, I got saved about 14. And I remember standing in this little church, and I'm standing with my, my dad, and um, he gets radically saved, and he's been going to church for about a year, and, um, the cool thing was, is, is, is he's like, you know, in my house, you're gonna, you're gonna follow the Lord. So I would be going back and forth from my mother's to my, my father's. My father's in New York at this time. I'm about 14, and I got saved. I got baptized, water baptized, and baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, all in about a three-week period of time. Okay, and. What I want you guys to understand is I still don't understand what it's like to be a Christ follower, a, a relationship-based a follower of Christ. Um, so by that, by that fourth week, um, I, I was selling drugs. I ran so fast. I, I, I've been, from the time that I got saved and all that had happened, I'd probably been um, arrested until I was about 32 I, I couldn't tell you. I just, it, it, I, I've been arrested so many times that, and I've been in such low places that, that uh, it never really just clicked until, until I met a friend that uh, Jeff brought up, my, my best friend in the whole wide world, um, Jamie Kuyu. And I'm not going to skip too far forward, but um, I was an addict. I was um, <clears throat> a, a person who only cared about myself. Uh, and, and didn't care who I used to get to where I needed to be because it was all about me. Um, and, 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 it, and that included family members. Um, I was a person that had no idea what true love was. Um, I didn't understand what the true test of love is. Does anyone know what that is? Mm -hmm. The true test of love is obedience, right? You see, that's where, where I've always missed the bus and I've always missed the the idea of, of following the Lord because I didn't know or understand or even try to know any um, or, or submit to any type of authority in my life because it was about me. I felt I was left out and I had to fend for myself. Has anyone ever been there by just show of hands? Amen. You see, um, uh, so that would take me into the point where um, this was my last straw. I had moved out to Buffalo, New York on my own, just thinking I'm going to do better things out there. Um, I got involved in a, in a pyramid scheme, um, and, and I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought, I thought that it was, this was legit, and, and it was a sales pyramid scheme, and, and I was really good. They had these, um, these uh, updates where it was just a, a national type thing, Jeff, and, and uh, I would be top three salesmen. Uh, for months upon months, and, and and what we'd do is we'd take Fortune 500 companies' products that they really didn't want or didn't market, and we would take them in, and I would go business to business with them and selling them for five, ten bucks. You know, you make a two dollar profit, and you get to keep that two dollar profit off of a five dollar bill. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't bad. I would, we would load up our trunks and we would get out into the public and we'd go into, into towns such as coming right here and we'd park um, and we'd go business to business. We'd get kicked out, we'd, we'd talk to people on the street and we'd sell these things and I was, I was crushing it. I was, I was bringing home two, three hundred dollars a day. Uh, that's how good I got at it and, and it was actually so organized that they, they flew me down to Cancun, all, all, um, everything paid for, <clears throat> flight. Everything. It was it was incredible, and, and and you know what I really learned from all that was you know I just dug my hole deeper, and um, uh, you know what that led me into is um, I got fired. I was getting ready to open up my own building in Buffalo. 
um, and, and, and they had promoted me to a management position, which you get your own building and then you're in charge of all the product, right? Well, I, I was still smoking a lot, of, a lot of weed and I was still drinking a whole ton and um, I got fired. Best thing that ever happened to me. I, I, was so, I was so broken in such a low place. I, had, I remember being about, I think it was 22, okay? I had to call my mom, who's in Syracuse, New York, and be like, hey, uh, can you come get me? Because I can't even afford a, a ticket, a uh, bus ticket or anything. And of course, she, she came and got me. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think of any other mother that wouldn't do that. But I remember that car ride was so long, and, and, and I remember uh, what that car ride was all about was, listen, you've messed it up from here, and now you're going to come under my roof. And and this and what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have two jobs minimum in order to stay here, and then you're gonna pay us. And I couldn't hold the job. It was more important for me to find my own friends from where I came from to go party again. I didn't. It wasn't clicking. But I found myself in those numbness spots that I had to result to. Okay. Um. The, it's funny because. Uh, when you're in something, it's just like just being a Christian now, and, and you know who provides, and you know who heals, and you know who comforts, and you know who 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 he says he is, that you're okay with it. Isn't it funny how, how you find your loved ones, and, and you're okay with them, you'll even make excuses for them um, to do something or the other, right or wrong, raised by just show of hands, right? Am I right about it? Um, I'm just letting you know. That, that when I was in that situation, I couldn't hold a job because of what else, of the lies that I believed. Have you been there? Uh, I couldn't, my mom was like, hey, you're gonna work two jobs minimum in order to stay here. So it got to be about three months and I, and I had the two jobs. I worked at a gas station and I worked on a farm. Uh, and where my mom lives, it's, it's really back country, big time. And, Hence the farm, um, but it was it was tough work, and I remember I knew what it was like to be a you know work. Uh, I think there wasn't a time in my life where I did not work. You know, at, from the time about fifteen, I understood what it was like to work. But, anyways, moving on, um, I I couldn't hold down that job. I couldn't hold down the gas station job, and 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 then the jobs conflicted, and and I couldn't get it to work out. And it was all designed. Um, uh, my mom said, finally, she said, yeah, this is just, it's not working out. You're, you're 22. And uh, it, it, you, can't, you can't follow the simple rules. Um, and she's like, I love you. And, and I know that uh, both of my parents were in the military. It's how they met. Um, um, and, and she said, I know that you said you would never, ever do this, but this is all I can think of, son, because when your stepfather comes home, he's had enough, and, and, and you, you need to make some decisions in your life, so uh, we went and saw a recruiter that, it was just the very next day, and I was just scared out of my wits, um, it was it was just something I, I just couldn't see myself doing, I didn't want that that discipline, I didn't want that, that kind of a lifestyle, and uh, um, to this day, I did about 10 years. Um, the first seven years, excuse me, the first six years that I was in the military, um, I deployed seven times. Um, and, and honestly, the first year and a half didn't really count. So if you look at it from my point of view, it would be I deployed seven times in probably about five years. Um, I actually got my stuff together. I was still drinking when I was in the military. Um, but... Uh, as far as the the drugs and and and, and that kind of stuff, it, it, it had to stop because I was periodically tested for it. Um, the cool thing is, what, what where this becomes really interesting is I was in my training, I'd made it through basic training, and I got to my job training, and and it turned out I had a little bit of intellect up here, and, and uh, I was a um, a networking guy. I dealt with computers and radios, and and uh, and I was one of those uh, what they call an RTO, um, and 
I was taking night classes because of the schedule that we ran during the, the job training, which they call AIT. And uh, uh, it's cool because, um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, my first sergeant, if any of you are from the military, a first sergeant is the eldest enlisted. We'll put it that way. He came to me and he said, Matt, come here. Um, you want to get out of the class tonight? I was like, why wouldn't I want to get out of the class tonight? You know, who wants to go to class? And uh, he's like, well, I want you to come to this briefing with me. Well, I went to the briefing with him, and uh, it turned out to be a ranger um, uh, uh, briefing. Uh, and the cool <laughs> thing was is I, I knew the guy that was giving the briefing, and I hadn't seen him since I was in high school. Well, it turns out the guy lived four houses down from me. We used to play lacrosse, basketball in each other's um, uh, driveways. And, and he's like, dude, what happened to you? And I was like, I know. You know, and he's actually exiting the Army that year. And he just had taken a, a, a recruiting job so that it would cushion his spot before he got out. And uh, uh, the cool thing was is he's just like, this is totally up your alley. You could do this. And it was from that point where I was just like, okay, I knew what it was going to take. It was going to be tough. I had to go through a selection. I had to know a lot of different stuff in order to go to where I was going. It was a special operations <clears throat> unit. Um, you know, so make the long story short, um, I deployed seven times in about five years, uh, roughly, give or take. Um, I've been to um, uh, Iraq three times and then Afghanistan four times. Um, I was on the border, this might encourage you, um, uh, I was on the border uh, the, in 2011, um, getting ready, to, we were just sitting there by a helicopter, getting ready to go in and back up the SEALs that went in, that killed Osama bin Laden. By the way, that's seven years ago yesterday. What? Amen. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, it, that was a great opportunity. I got to see a lot of things. I got to uh, work with a lot of people. There's some things I can't tell you that's still classified to this day. I worked with um, CIA. I've worked with the FBI. And, um, and I've worked with the Navy SEALs and even, even some of the Delta Force guys. Okay? Um, the spooky guys. The guys that you don't hear of. You know, you can hear about the SEALs all day, but let's be real. If you're, amen. I see you back there. Um, uh, if you know, if you know about the army, obviously the army's better than the navy. I'm just gonna let you know that now. And the thing is, is you're not.